For today's level up tutorial, we'll be focusing on creating this Hell Rift VFX in Unity. Let's dive in. Hello, I'm Benjamin Erdei. I'm a VFX artist at Beyond Effects, and for this tutorial, you're already gonna need to know a little bit of Houdini, shaders, and have a general understanding on how Unity works. More specifically, we'll focus on how the stone shape was achieved, this one right here in the right side, and we'll also touch on the additional particles that's around the stone shape. All right, let's dive into the Houdini part. So now we are here in Houdini, and I just dropped a geometry node, and inside of it I have this box that I subdivided a few times, made it a little bit bigger, and then I have this volume node and the scatter node to scatter some points. And I'm piping this back into an RBD material fracture node. And that's a fairly simple and straightforward setup to create a fractured mesh. What I'm doing after that is just some processing on this mesh. Here I'm grouping the center pieces into a separated group. I'm doing some UV unwrapping and here coloring the insides to blue and the outside pieces to red. And after I'm done with all that, I pipe this into an assemble node, which gives my pieces. What I'm doing is turning off in the RBD configure node, the bullet data, I'm setting the active to zero, and I'm only setting it back to one for the group one, which I made here. So only the center pieces are gonna be active in my dot network. And that's one piece uh, I have to create. In the other side, I have this sphere, which I'm just transforming, and this is the sphere that I'm animating. I'm also piping this into my dotnet. So into the dotnet, you can see here is my sphere, and I have this plane. I merge them together, and I pipe it into a rigid body solver. I apply some drag to them, and pretty much turn off the gravity and the other stuff, because I don't want these pieces to fall to the ground, right? So whenever I go back and select my dotnet, this is the result. They just kind of float. If I turn this on a bit, so you can see what's happening, I animated my sphere to kind of break through this, um, this mesh. After we have that, we can focus on the result we have here. What I do next is just twisting the mesh over time. I have another twist node, which is set up a little bit differently, which also twisting some of these pieces a little bit more. And then I also bend them in order to create this shape. I kind of taper the edges to make it a little bit more interesting. And I created a group here where I target some of these pieces that like fly away. Um, it's easier to control if I just grab them manually after it's done. And then I just scale them down over time. So they are not an issue, visually speaking. And I also use a blast node where I select everything that's not inside my initial group one. And that's my final thing that I'm going to export. So in the same geometry node, on the left side, I have pretty much the copy of the system that I showcased previously. The only difference is that whenever I'm grouping my fractured pieces, I have them grouped a little bit in a different way, where this gives me this ring shape. And inside my dot network, I have gravity turned on, which gives me this kind of result. After I'm blasting away the centerpiece, that's the other effect I'm going to export. Just to touch a little bit on how you can get this into a game engine, there's multiple ways that you can do it. You can use Alembic or RBD to FBX or what I did, vertex animation textures. After you're done with your setup, you set the exporter up and press render all, which is gonna output you triangulated mesh, a few textures, and a shader, which if you plug in into your engine, hopefully it's just going to magically work. So in my case, bringing the effect from Houdini to Unity wasn't so straightforward. I'm using the built-in render pipeline. The out-of-the-box vertex animation texture tool from Houdini didn't really want it to cooperate with me. So what I did instead is exported it as Alembic, and then I found this very cool tool in GitHub, which turns Alembic files into vertex animation textures. You can find this tool in the description down below. So assuming you know how vertex animation textures work, I'm not gonna go into details on how this part of the shader was set up, basically sampling the outputs of that tool. And we are just going to use that to animate our mesh here. 
So what I'm going to touch on is instead this part where I added some additional noise on top of our vertex animation. Um, this is for making it less static whenever the animation is completed. So it gives it a little bit more bubbliness, more interesting motion. So it's not just standing there doing nothing. The other part I wanted to touch on a bit is how I color it. Uh, more specifically, how do I color the cracks? As you can see here, the cracks are glowy and emissive and looking almost like molten a bit whenever the animation starts and they kind of cool off whenever the animation ends. So the way I achieve this is just some word position based noise that I use to sample a gradient. And previously in Houdini, I colored my inner pieces of the fractured mesh to blue. So I bake that into my vertex colors. So here I'm getting the blue parts of my vertex colors and I'm only multiplying my gradient with the blue inner pieces. And I'm lerping based on this information between this stony gray color and uh, the multiplied version, which is a bit more molten and lava like now we have our vertex animation working and I'm really happy how it turned out. But it's not really a hell rift yet. It's currently more like just a bunch of rocks. So let's see how we can achieve more of the hell rift look. I'm gonna unhide my anticipation VFX and I'm just gonna play it by itself. This effect consists of a few different particle system emitters played together. One of them is this ground crack that I hand painted. I animate the fading in and I also animate the emissive values, so it reaches its highest point whenever the vertex animation breaks through the floor. So it plays together very nicely. I also have some of these directional rays that I kind of angled in a way where the portal is going to open up, as you can see. And the rest of it is just embers and other flame shapes that I created. These are very simple particles basically just a few noises and I'm controlling the color over lifetime and scaling them over lifetime. Just your bread and butter little particles, nothing too crazy. Okay, so now we have our anticipation effect playing together very nicely with the vertex animation. I'm gonna turn it off for a bit so we can focus on some of these additional elements I added. I'm gonna turn them on one by one. So first is this flame curve. This is just a curve mesh I made in Blender, and then I'm scrolling a mask and a noise on top of it. The next one is this flame shape, which is basically a tube that I deformed in a way where it's bending. And I have some vertex offset applied to it and a flaming texture that's scrolling through it. It's fairly simple. I have two of these shapes on the ground, which are really similar to the one that I just showed. Um, these are looking like this. They are fairly high poly, they could be reduced, but this is just for learning purposes. And the start of the show is, if I can hide them and show this one, is this rift, which again is a fairly simple mesh. Looks like this. It has parallax occlusion mapping, which drives this effect. But now let's dive into Substance Designer to see how some of the textures were created to make this effect work. All right, so now we are here in Substance Designer and I just wanted to point out that I learned this technique from one of my talented colleagues called Pete Nichols. And he also provided this amazing uh, tilings uh, stone texture that I'm gonna use as a basis of this effect. First of all, I'm splitting this split map into RGBA because we only gonna work in grayscale. So I'm just gonna use the R channel. And if I zoom out, you can see how these rows of nodes look like. They do pretty much the exact same, so I'm just gonna zoom into one of them and show you what I did. I use transformation node to change up the tiling and the look of the texture. And I have a linear gradient that I pipe into a histogram scan to have a bit more control over how it looks. I'm doing a bevel on the transformed rock noise. And I'm basically blending these two together, piping it into an auto levels node to fix up my values. And then I do another transformation node just for make sure this uh, placed in the correct uh, way. And I do this pretty much the exact same way in all these rows. I just change up the how the transformation node looks like and maybe some of the um, histogram scans and maybe I do some extra histogram range at the end. But that's pretty much it. 
the topmost layer uh, have another blending, which is pretty much just subtracting this noise I made up here from the texture. So this is gonna result uh, this cut edge. And uh, what I do after all these layers are done is pretty much using this height blend node and layer them on top of each other. So you can see if I zoom out, this is the bottommost layer. And on top, I would have this one. And this is going to be the result. So I just walk my way up to the top and layer them on top of each other. And my end result is going to be something like this. And what I do after that is to transform it into a polar texture with Cartesian to polar coordinate nodes. After that, I do some additional blending on it. Again, this magic node auto levels fix up all my mistakes. And um, other than that, I just blend it with some paraboloid shape here to get the look that I need for my shader. I also adjust some of the values here with the curve node, but that's pretty much my output texture. So whatever the darkest here, is going to be farther away from the camera and whatever the highest value or the more white is going to be closer to the camera whenever I plug this in into my shader in Unity. The other texture I'm creating uh, using pretty much the same thing. So here I have this auto levels node, but instead of going down this route, I'm gonna go up here. I applying some additional noise to give some variation to the rocks and I'm using the levels node to um, have more control over how I want to bevel this. So my bevel node has this output, which I can now pipe into the normal node that's gonna generate me some normal vectors. And if I use this as a, a basis for my color texture, I can just plug in the light node, which is gonna give me some free shading pretty much. And uh, I also use this curvature smooth node uh, which combined together with the light node gives us a fairly pleasant result. I use a gradient map uh, to color my little um, rock texture, and this is my other output, which is gonna be my color texture. All right, so now we are here in Unity, and you can see this is our parallax effect. It looks nice and shiny, and this is the shader that we use to create this effect. This shader consists of two bigger parts. One of them is the rock formation, and how we created the UVs to sample the color texture. The other one is this swirly motion in the center. In order to create that, I use the same UVs that I use for sampling the color texture. I basically use a twirl node, and here you can see what a twirl node does with the UVs. And I use a rotator node to give it a bit more motion. I plug this in and sample my fire texture, which sadly doesn't really show up very well in this preview window, um, but you can maybe see it here. And then I use this uh, with a gradient sampling to give it a bit more color. Here I have more control over the MEC values and I save this as my fire. In order to figure out where do I want to put fire in this effect, I have to create a mask, which I did here. I'm basically sampling the same parallax texture. Here with the smooth step node, I'm masking out the most bottom part. I save it as middle mask. And here, Whenever I'm compositing the effect, what I do basically is lurping between my fire and my rocks based on the middle mask. And that's gonna be my end result. Playing all three together gives us this look, which already looks pretty cool and believable, but the animation and how it looks is still fairly static. So I added this last particle system, which is gonna loop with the played out vertex animation together so this gives it a bit more vibrance, I would say. It looks very warm, and if I play it together, it's kind of aggressively animated, so it looks a bit more dangerous. What I did is basically repurposed a bunch of particle systems from the anticipation itself and added some smoky elements and some orbiting rocks on top. Also, there is like a very subtle heat distortion in the center of the, of the portal. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, drop it in the comments below, or you can DM me on Twitter or Discord. I will leave my contact details in the video description. And if we inspired you to create something cool, share it with us. We always love to see what other community members do. Again, thank you so much and have a nice day.